But it's always exciting to have Ernie and, and Carol Salinas with us. I've appreciated our, our relationship that we've developed through the years, and, and it goes way back to another church that he used to come to, and, and I, I always appreciated the word that he had to share. He wasn't just a, a typical message, but uh, born out of a heart of passion and, a, and a, a, a value for the presence of God. And so, uh, Ernie, we're just going to invite you to come up and turn you loose. Would you like a headset or would you like a handheld mic? Okay. If you've got a stand, that would be great. Sure. We, uh, Perhaps a lazy boy chair. A lazy boy chair? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've made requests like that too that never came about. The Bible says to ask and you shall receive, so we... Yeah, it depends on who you ask. That's true. <laughs> you know, God, God, God has unlimited resources. We have a, a little bit of a limitation. Well, we appreciate you limiting yourself to us this morning if you uh, as we put it but we're so glad to be back here this morning first of all let me pray for you i just sense a, a need to pray for you this morning lord we thank you for these people who first of all have given themselves to you and the evidence with people being baptized and people having you speak to them through various members of the body is something that is rare in this world but something that we as a church we co we just covet we those times when we can be with you and, and share this and father we pray for this church as they make forward motion as they move forward they are moving forward and you told us years ago when we first started coming here that they would be moving forward and they would have influence in this city and we pray, Father God, that you would fulfill this vision that you gave to Dave and Mickey many years ago and their elders, and that you would continue to do what you're doing in this place. And we're going to give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's such a pleasure to be back here with you guys. Uh, first of all, let me introduce my wife. To those who don't care, would you stand? This is... It, Carol is the same wife I had the last time I was here. And yes, I do, I, and I do appreciate that very much myself. But because we, all, we have 11 grandchildren, and, and they, they like her, so we have to keep her around. But no, we're, we're, very, we're very happy to be back with you guys. Uh, uh, Dave and Mickey know we just got back from uh, a year, let me put it this way, a year ago, we were here sharing with you that God had laid upon our heart to go to the country of Latvia, uh, which is a Baltic country and uh, had been under Russian domination for many, many years. And I kept saying that. I didn't quite understand the full impact of that until we got there. But we, we just arrived back just a day and a half ago from that country after standing nearly two and a half weeks there, ministering in churches and teaching in the Bible college. And God really touched our hearts. And let me tell you why. Uh, we, we, were, we were very privileged to speak at many of the churches. You guys sent us, by the way. You helped us get there. And we appreciate that so much. But while we were there, at every table that we, we, would, we would speak at, or whenever we were with the believers, there was one constant theme. And I want you to listen to this. The pastors of the churches were telling the people, be strong. Things are about to change. And if you've not been following the news, the, the Russia has claimed that they are coming back into Latvia, into Estonia, and Lithuania and all those countries that they once ruled, they are coming back. And while we were there, there were 300,000 Russian troops massed on the, on the eastern, western border of Russia, poised to come into these three small countries and retake them because they see them as belonging to the country of Russia. Well, the only, the only reason I mention that is because when, when the Russians come in, they bring with them their own totalitarian system and the church does not fit within that system. And they know that when the Russians return, the church will once again be forced underground. And it will again be a, a, just like it was during the Cold War for many, many years. And so this is amazing. I have never heard anything like this in my life. The pastors were warning the people. We know it's coming. It's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of when. And they were warning their people. They're coming, and you know it's going to be very difficult on us. Prepare yourself for a very trying season. And we kept hearing that at the churches where we were, and the pastors were preparing their people for what's about to happen. 
and it was very heartbreaking on one uh, just to, to look around at these Russian and Latvian believers and realize that these people who love God and are very Pentecostal, very Pentecostal, and to realize that in, in just probably a matter of year, a year or so, this church will be snuffed out visibly and it will be an underground church. And they were just encouraging them to be strong and prepare themselves for what was about to happen. And so we need to pray for them because when the Russian country, when Russia returns, Western influence, the gospel and all these things are going to be cut off and we may never be able to have, uh, uh, be in touch with them again. And teaching in the Bible college, we were working with some very dedicated young people who realized that and they kept telling me, we realize that we are going into a meat grinder and we, we know that what's going to be expected of us. So we, 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 were very, we were very humbled to be there. It breaks my heart to realize what's going to happen there. But God is in control. It's in the, it's in the word of God. It's coming. We can't, uh, you can't change what God has already set in motion. But the church there is strong and they just need your prayers. So keep praying for them. And thank you for sending us there. It was an incredible, it, it wasn't an adventure. It was a very heartbreaking. It was very personal but it was very rewarding. We saw many people delivered. We saw many people coming to the Lord. It was a great opportunity. Carol and I just got back. We're still kind of, we're on European time. So uh, you'll have to forgive us if we're a little bit, you know, fuzzy. So, but if you have your Bible this morning, thank you, Pastor Dave, for letting me come back and share. Uh, we feel like we've just stepped out of a, a, a surreal world, but it's, it, it's very real to them. And we, we would, I know they covered your prayers. In Matthew chapter 8 is an amazing story, and it touches on what you've done here in a way, in, in, in a bound, roundabout way, but it's something the Lord laid upon my heart. I just want to share just a couple of things. First of all, I, I love this new system where the pastor doesn't have to get wet when he's baptizing people. <laughs> they didn't have that when I was the pastor, boy. You had to get right in there, and but blessings on you for having this convenience. That's great. What a wonderful thing. Yes, amen. Uh, but, you know, I was watching this, and, and I, I just want to touch this real quick, because there's, there's, there's something that's very important here. And, and every one of those who, who, every person who goes into heaven, every person who becomes a believer is commanded to be baptized, right? But there's a humiliation that happens in water baptism, isn't there? I remember it. You remember it. Those who, are, who just had the water, there's a humiliation that factor there. You know Why? Because you went down one person and you came back all sopping wet and hair messed up, you know, and, and not your best view, in other words. It's supposed to be that way. It really symbolizes the change that has taken place in your life. And so we, we honor those who have been baptized here today. And, but in this story I'm going to read you, the centurion, uh, I, I just want to talk to you about faith that amazes, okay? Just real quick. We won't take long this morning. But in Matthew chapter, uh, chapter 8, looking at verse 5, And when Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Verse 6, Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. And Jesus said to him, and this is an incredible, this is an incredible question on the part of Jesus because Jesus was a devout Jew and the centurion was a Gentile and Jewish devout people did not enter the homes of people like this centurion. Keep that in mind. Shall I come and heal him? And the centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. Why? Because I myself am a man under authority. I have soldiers under me. I tell them this one go and he goes, and that one come and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard this, if you got your pen, I'd like for you to underline this, this verse if you would. So take out your pen, underline, highlight this verse. This is a very important verse. He was amazed and said to those following him, because there are always people following him, truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. 
this is an incredible story because there, there are so many dynamics. There are so many trails to follow here. We can't cover them all and get you, get you back to the Dairy Queen in time for lunch, okay? That's, but what we want to do, what, I, what the Lord has laid upon my heart, is just share with you just the basic kind of in information embedded here for some reason. I know that you are a church, a growing church, and I know that many of you, because I know many of you, or have been in this faith walk for many, many years, and you understand faith. But I just wanted to come back again and touch on this, because this is an amazing story, because this man has a faith that amazes Jesus. That is rare in the ministry of Jesus to come across someone like this. Jesus usually finds people who are, you know, they need reinforcement, they need all kinds of help, but this man is ready. He understands what it takes, and he just says to Jesus, just say the word. Say that with me. Just say the word. It's an amazing story. Because in here is a, it, it's, it's a story of a man's faith. Now, somewhere in here, and we're not told where, and I can't find the right version, but somewhere in here, this centurion has just come from a faith builders conference at the local Hilton. And he was there for three days and his faith got built up and now he goes to Jesus. Probably not. Or maybe he was listening to a series by some leading faith speaker. And he had listened to this series over and over. Now his faith is at this level and let's go to Jesus. Probably not. Or maybe he had been reading books on faith. You know, Smith Wigglesworth, other guys like this. Ah, now my faith is ready. It's not true. This man is a centurion, he's a Gentile, and he just understands what's going on. He figures it out on his way to meet Jesus. Several years ago in a garage somewhere in California, a man sat hunched over a, a series of tools and just stuff in front of him that you and I probably wouldn't even understand what he's doing. But in his heart, he saw something. In his heart, he saw something that basically touches every life in this room. It touches your money. It touches your personal life. It touches your every day. It touches the way you pay your bills. And that man, looking at those tools all around there, he didn't, see, he didn't see the table so much, and he didn't see the assortment of tools to work with, and he didn't see the, 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 the little computer that he was kind of playing with, but he saw something that the computer needed. And so Bill Gates put his energy not into computers, but into developing the operating system for the computer. Because he knew that somewhere along the line, somebody's going to build an amazing machine. And what he saw as necessary was a way to make it do what it was capable of doing. Someone has said that faith, listen to this, faith is the human operating system. Faith is the human operating system. What I'm going to talk to you about just briefly is faith, and it's going to touch the unsaved and the saved as well. And as we go through this, you're going to see what I mean. This is a remarkable building. You're getting a new building. Praise God. Step two in, in, in a step that go, in the journey God is taking you. But these buildings that you see around you, the houses, the, the layout of the street, before they existed in a tangible world, they existed in the minds and in the hearts of people who design, who dream, who see things in their heart and take them and move them by the steps into the process of becoming real. And sometimes when I talk about faith in churches, people say to me, oh no, not that stuff again, okay? And then people come to me, I, I just don't have that kind of faith. And nobody, I've never heard anybody come to me and say, man, I got that kind of faith. I always just, people say, I wish I had more faith or, I, you know, because it always seems like faith is such a demanding slave driver, but you don't realize is that you're moving in faith whether you know it or not. Even if you're not a believer and you're here this morning, your life is based on faith. Faith is an integral part of everything we do in every way. If you drove here in the car this morning, 
Someone built that car and you have faith in the design and in the concept. You're sitting in a chair. You never met the person who made that chair, yet you believe in their dream and you're sitting on that chair safely. Amen? <laughs> Think about it. We were in a meeting in, in Africa and they had put Carol and I in a seats of honor, which we just, we, we didn't really deserve to be there. And to prove it, the Lord allowed the chair beneath me to collapse. <laughs> and the poor pastor, he was so heartbroken because his guest from America was sitting on the ground, you know, and the chair had broken. He was so embarrassed. But you know, everything that we do is based on faith. It is. And so it kind of it, it kind of is it, it kind of is humorous when people say to me, "Well, I don't have any faith." If you have your Bibles, I'd like to just kind of step through. Go to Hebrews chapter 11. I want to walk through this real quick. William Wordsworth said that faith is nothing more than passionate intuition. Passionate about something that we know can be done. That's faith. But here's what the Bible says about faith. And it begins with three words. And I'm reading from Hebrews chapter 11. You know this chapter. Verse 1. I don't know why God is taking us here. But listen carefully because I think this is for someone or some a group of those that are here today. It begins with three words. He writes these words to a church that is basically new to believing. And here comes the words. Now faith is. This is what it says in my Bible. Now I'm not going to tweak the words and I'm going to play with the words. I'm not going to try to change the meaning of the words. But it just says to me the, from the mind of the writer who was writing as the Holy Spirit breathed into him. Say this, write this. He says, now faith is. And what he was essentially saying is, faith is already here. Now faith is. There's faith, and it's already here. And people say, well, I have no faith, because I can't pray for the sick, or I can't raise the dead. But you have faith. The Bible says, to each is given, in, in Romans chapter 12, verse 3, that to each, and not just to each believer, but to each is given a measure of faith. In other words, when God created you and he was putting you together, he stuck something inside of your brain, the ability to believe in things not yet tangible or focusable. He put within you the capacity of imagination. Say that word, imagine. Come on, one more time. Is, is everybody here? Or have we got everybody here this morning? Okay, ready? One, two, three. Imagination. The most incredible gift that God gave. Why? Because it is out of that department within your brain that everything you will become, everything you are, everything you dream about, everything you accomplish begins there, there, there. And it's the category labeled faith. Now faith is. So I don't care who you are, I don't care how young you are, if you've never been to church before, or if you've been in church all your life, here's a word for you. You have faith. You have faith. We were riding in a plane yesterday, uh, two days ago, and it had over four, uh, almost 400 people in it. And we were flying at 40,000 feet, and I kept hearing a question my wife asked me several years ago. Are you ready for this question? How do airplanes fly? I mean, if you're 40,000 feet, you either believe that an airplane can fly or you go to the exit and get off. But watch the first step. You see what I mean? You believe in the concept. You believe that plane. Well, it's not, it has nothing to do with, and a scientist would tell you, it has nothing to do with, with imagination or, or, or invisible strings. It's simply theories coming together to create a reality. Theories in physics that work, thrust, lift, power, and it works. It works well. But all of these are born in the imagination of people because God created you with the capacity to believe, to have faith. Someone said to me, oh, I can never do that. And you're right, because you've stamped across your imagination. We're not using you anymore. Because some abuse their imagination. And you know what I'm talking about. But if used in the way in which God 
wanted us to use, it becomes something that will open many doors in your life, allow you to see God do incredible things, and take you places you never thought you would go. I was talking to the students uh, last week, and, and imagine now, these are students who are about to live under a very oppressive regime. And I kept reminding them, with the power of God in your life and faith, you can do anything God calls you to, be, to do and to be. And saying that to people who are about to have a, a momentous life change is a, you know, that, that's, that means something. It may not mean anything to you. Toss it off. I mean, forget it. But to every one of you, God has created the capacity to dream, to imagine. Now faith is. So just two more steps and then we're done, okay? If you have your Bible, I want you to scoot down to verse 3. Because there's two words, and I always, someday I'm going to do this, not, not here because it's too late, but I'm going to preach a sermon of just two words, okay? And these are going to be the two words, by faith. That's, that's really, that's, because everything around you is by faith. This piano here, this microphone, this pulpit existed in the imagination before it existed in tangible results. Now faith is. If you're building a chicken coop in your backyard, first you have to see it in your imagination. But listen to this, by faith. Note that everything that happens after this verse is a, if you will, it is a diary or a, an ongoing log of what happened in the Bible, moving the covenant forward. And it always begins with these two words, say it out loud, by faith. So in other words, everything that happened in the Old Testament, and they were not supposed to be a faith people, happened by faith. By faith, Noah. By faith, Moses. By faith, Abraham. By faith, David. Keep reading. That's what you're going to find. Nothing happens unless it's moved by these two words, by faith. God stirs the heart to believe cast his vision into the heart of an individual, and suddenly it begins to take on a life of its own. Now, I'm not talking about some crazy weird, but I am talking about people who have a tender spirit before the Lord that allows him to plant his dream, not our imagination, but his dream in our life, and bring it to fruition. And that's why they started this church. That's why other church planters started their church, because they believed that once the church took a hold of this, that by faith it would begin to grow, and it is. Amen? Oh, come on. Give me, give me an amen. Oh, there you go. Note that everything that is happening is by faith. And if you're here today, and you've never given your heart to Jesus Christ, the moment you do, and you could do that this morning, you'll make a step by faith into what Brian Houston from Australia calls the great mysterious. You will step into the great mysterious. Now, the, the, around us, we have all the people in the world who refuse to believe in God, and they don't want anything to do with the church re without realizing that they will never experience the great mysterious that God wants to lead them forward into. I like that. Do you like that? You can use that this week, okay? The great mysterious. Because somewhere out there, God has created and commanded that there be challenges to your faith. And by faith, you'll move forward. And by faith, you'll move forward. And by faith, you'll assault the next level. You'll go up by faith. Those of you who finished college, those of you who are in college, those of you who are working on a day-to-day -day job. I had a lady come to me one time, we were pastoring in Yakima, and she said, Brother Ernie, that's a great message, but we don't need faith right now because my husband Dan has got a great job. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. She's right. She didn't have to believe God to provide day by day because Dan had a great job. But a year later, when Dan lost his great job, want to, can I see your notes? In other words, it's always there. The life of a believer is a life of faith. The Bible says that whatever is not of faith is sin. Okay? 
Everything that moves the church forward, everything that moves the covenant forward, everything that moves our world forward is by faith. It's either by faith in God or it's by faith in, in, in principles of, of physics or principles of whatever, medicine or principles of this or that. But you move forward by faith. And if you and I can accept that, I, I, I was preaching on faith one time and, and a group of people come afterwards and they say, now, uh, Brother Br Br Salinas, uh, we just need to know, is this, uh, like, is this supersized faith or is this seed faith? Or is this, well, exactly which category of faith does this fall under? <laughs> I mean, because we got, we've been, we've been learning about faith and there are several categories in which to place faith. And I said, uh, excuse me, I think my wife is calling. I'm going to. Because I don't, think it, I don't think it's labelable. If you, I don't think you can brand it. It's just what it is. It's what God created it to be. It's his, it's his God-given ability to create from the imagination planted in deep inside of you. And when that becomes faith-bathed, when it's bathed in faith in Jesus Christ and in the Word of God and what the Word of God teaches, men and women do wonderful things move forward. When I was talking to the young people in the class about faith, we spent an entire day talking about by faith because many of them will be called to live by faith. And that, you know, we, we tried to figure it out. So we, we figured out that we can't pres presume upon God. David said, keep me from presumptuous sins. I'll presume God will give me. And more come to him and say, by faith, we're believing that you will provide for us. By faith. Say it with me. By faith. Oh, by the way, I like this. Everything you do in your life is done by faith. It's the operating system you operate on. It's the operating system like the one in your computer. But you want to hear something funny? You cannot buy faith. Okay? You cannot go out and purchase it. You can't buy a large quantity of it for certain times. But you know what you can do? You can bathe yourself in the word of God, in the knowledge of scripture, to the point that faith begins to grow. That faith begins to be supported when we turn and step into faith situations. But you can't buy faith. You know, in America, and that's one of the things that we know from traveling around the world, you know, they, they tell us, you guys can buy anything. You can buy anything. And we think we can buy anything. We can fix anything and we can buy anything. But when it comes to this particular part of your life, nothing happens unless it's by faith. Okay? One last thought because I'm quickly running out of time. All right? How many agree with that? Amen. Yes. Many are applauded. Okay. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. So is all this, any of this necessary? So any of this going to be called upon at any certain time? Will I be... Will I have to demonstrate this in my life? Or can I just let it, you know, be there and not worry about it? You know, before you get all lazy in your faith, listen to this verse. We talked about, number one, faith is present in our life. Number two, it's by faith that everything happens. And number three, listen to what the writer says in verse six. Without faith. Say that with me. Without faith. Say it again. Without faith. Because there's a lot of people sitting here right now that believe they are without faith. They really do. But here's what the writer said. It is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him. Now that's people who come to him. For a new life. For a difference. For to leave behind an old life. And take upon themselves a new life in Jesus Christ. Must believe. That he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Now, the key factor in this is built around these words. First of all, without faith, it's impossible to please God. You have one. You may not know it if you're a believer here. If you're an unbeliever, this doesn't, this doesn't even show up on your radar screen. Okay, it's not even something you think about. But if you are a believer, and I think most of you are, your sole purpose in life is to please God by your living and by 
the results of your daily life. Amen? Imagine before you go to bed each night, looking back over your life and saying, God, before I, would you sign off on my life that you were pleased by what I did today? Uh, I think we have some problem with that one. Amen? I would. Okay? I would. There's so many times we try to fix something, we try to do something, not realizing that God has created this as something that only he can deal with. So we walk in faith. If you have your Bibles open, and you should have, I want you to go back to chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is, verse 3, by faith, and verse 6, without faith. Those three, those three verses will affect you more than you know. They will have a divine and, and powerful effect on your life going forward. So what do I do, Ernie? What, give me some concrete stuff because I, I got the spiritual side, but what do I do? It's simple. You talk to your pastor. Or you talk to anyone else who's ever stepped out by faith. And you'll realize that there are certain times God speaks to you and said, do this, even though you don't know what will happen next. It's Peter in the boat, looking across the stormy sea, seeing Jesus and saying to Jesus, if it's really you, cause me or call me to come to you. And Jesus, said, come on, man. And Peter puts his leg over the boat and he puts his other leg over the boat and he starts walking on water, the first human to ever do such a thing. Because he is standing on what God, what Jesus has called him to do. Come on. And God might be speaking to your heart right now. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's just in your workaday life. He's not saying to quit your job. He's not saying sell the Buick and put, you know, put the house up for rent. But he may well be saying to you, in areas that are very, very sensitive. Step this way. Step into the great mysterious. You need that. You need that. You cannot function without it. We say sometimes to people that they desperately need the power of the Holy Spirit in life. This is where you will create within your heart a hunger for the Holy Spirit. It really is. Because once you begin moving in faith, you begin to realize that the Holy Spirit is calling you to himself. So let's go over this over one more time and then we're done. Whoopee. Now faith is by faith and without faith. So to close, I need you to go back to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. And here's a centurion in the course of his everyday life out of the everyday thing that he does for a living, realizing that what Jesus is doing is simply possible because he understands authority over situations and over men and over things. So he said, you know, I just say the word. Because by the way, Jesus, if you come to my house, you'll have to purify yourself for six days before you can re-enter the temple. And you'll have to shave and you have to do all this stuff. Oh, I don't, don't mess with that. Just, just say the word. And Jesus was amazed. He was amazed. Now, there is no other place in the Bible that that particular phrase is used. And the Bible, and amazed there means like, whoa. What did I just hear? And he even said it out loud. I've, I've never met anybody like this guy in all of Israel. And I want you to drop down to the last part of this verse and then we're, we're done, okay? In verse 13, go. It will be done just as you said it would. Just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed. I just felt in my heart this morning that whether you're here because you're people of faith or you're here because someone invited you and you're still trying to figure out what in the world these crazy people up to. You are a human being, and part of you, part of you, operates by faith. When you turn the key, press the button, when you go into the door of your home, 
It's because someone saw that before it was a reality. And that was faith. And when we come to him, first, for our first step as, a, as unbelievers, I remember the first time I came to him, you may remember, if you're a believer, the first time you, you came, you said, oh, I, I don't really understand all of it. I don't get it. But I, I really think there's something inside of me that says, I need this. That was an act of faith on your part. And if you're a believer here, and you're just kind of bumping your head against the circumstances of every day, it might be God saying to you, it's time to move by faith. To start believing me, and that I can. And we could all stand up and give instances where miracles occurred in our life. Amen? How many have ever had a miracle in their life? Raise your hand. And that's about everybody here. Wow. Okay. But all that is because it's, it's God's way of communicating his greatness to us, his majesty, his ability. So bow your heads with me first before the beginning. We're going to pray that the Lord would begin to, in the words of a rather, you know, rather defeated man over the condition of his son, <laughs> Jesus, I do believe Help my unbelief. I do believe. And if that's you this morning, I'd just like you to lay your hand on your heart and say, Lord, I, I do believe. I got, I got so much fear in my life. Lay your hand on your heart. You don't have to raise your hand. We're not taking your picture and going to send it in the newspaper. We just wanted you to isolate yourself. You're lay your heart and say, I, I struggle with faith. Be honest with him. I struggle with faith. Father, for those who are human, who are here, and who've laid their hand on their heart to say, I have unbelief in my heart. You're not here with, this, with the spanking board. But you're here to coax us forward, to call us forward into faith. We bless you for that. So we pray for everyone who's got their hand on their heart, for everyone who feels like they're struggling with faith, that you would begin to just let the wind of the Holy Spirit blow across their imagination and across their heart. May they feel the impulse of life as the Holy Spirit releases hope into their imagination, into their life about whatever they're facing. Because God is a God of whom nothing is impossible. Would you stand to your feet with me for just a moment? I'm going to ask the worship team to come back. and We're just going to close, and Pastor has liberty to do this. We're not going to do anything spiritually weird, okay? Turn to your neighbor and say, we're safe. Okay, not going to do anything weird. What we are going to do, first thing, is we're going to, add, we're, we're going to just worship for just a moment, and then I'm going to make two, two invitations. But before we do, I'm just going to ask them to worship that, 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 uh, that second song that we sing, Faith, uh, Strength Will Rise, yeah. as we wait upon the Lord. Can you slow it down just a little bit? Yeah. And let's worship together. In this. We're going to sing this song together. Faith will rise. Strength will rise, rather. Just close your eyes and just kind of worship together. Are you ready? Here we go. Now, usually I say, here we go, and the music team just jumps right in. <laughs> We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait. 
What I'm going to ask you to do right now before we go on, I'm going to ask you to take a look at your life. If you are here today and you can't point to a place in your life where you gave your heart to Jesus Christ, if you can't honestly say that if you died at this moment, you would be in the presence of God because you've never given him authority to rule in your life, I want you to do just one thing with us. I want you to stand by to pray with us. And I want you to repeat after me as I pray. So I'm going to ask the music to go down real low. And I'm going to ask everyone in this room to repeat after me this prayer. Because we're going to pray for people who have never given their heart to Jesus. We're going to say a sinner's prayer. And if you've never given your heart to Jesus Christ, as you say these words, he will hear you. Are you ready? Father in heaven, Father in heaven, I understand, I understand that I need you. That I need you. I cannot have, I cannot have the life you expect me to have, life you expect me to have until you control my life. Until you control my life. So with all the honesty in me, so with all the honesty in me, born of conviction, born of conviction I give my life to you. Say it again. I give my life to you. Come into my heart. Make me a new creature. Let my faith explode in the spiritual realm that I long to operate in. We ask this now. In Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Now what I'm going to ask you to do, if you prayed that prayer for the very first time, when we close, I would like to meet with you at the front so that we can pray with you again and help you get started a new life. But we're going to do this right now is we're going to sing one more chord, this chorus one more time because strength will rise. And then we're going to pray one day, we're going to pray for one another. And there's sicknesses here today and there's uh, head colds and there's back aches and there's headaches. Amen. You brought all that to church with you. We're going to pray one for another before we leave. Okay, you ready? Strength will rise. Are you ready? Let's go. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. One last time, strength will rise. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Okay, so what we'd like you to do, can you close the aisles wherever you're sitting, kind of come together. And I would like you to reach out your hand. I want you to put your hand on the shoulder of the person beside you. We've been talking about faith and how it affects you. But now we're going to ask you to pray for someone else right now. We're going to ask you to pray the prayer of faith over someone right now. Faith for healing. Faith for restoration. Faith for whatever God wants to do in your life. Are you ready? Let's pray together. I want you to begin to minister to them right now. We just begin to pray for them. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus, with faith in the name of Jesus, that you would heal my sister right now, that you would restore, that you would bring health, and you would bring back, Lord God, all the things that the enemy has taken from their life, the joy, the sense of responsibility, in the name of Jesus. Come on, you ready? In the name of Jesus. Say it again. In the name of Jesus. We ask in the name of Jesus that you restore. Say it out loud. And you heal. In the name of Jesus. We are praying in faith. Say it out loud. We are praying in faith. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Let's worship for just a moment longer, and then we're turning back to pastor. You ready? Faith stream. Rises, we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Heavenly Father, right now, before this building empties, before these people le reach the door today, may they feel the wind of the Holy Spirit blowing over their imagination and over their faith and over what they believe. May they begin to feel the power of the creative God moving across them in the name of Jesus and by the authority of Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, if you prayed a prayer of faith for salvation for the first time, please come up and meet with Carol and I here by the pool so that we can pray with you. But, Pastor, would you come and bless your people in Jesus' name? Yeah. Let's, let's do that whole song. Will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign. God, you do not faint and you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in yes, need. God. You lift us up on wings like eagles. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. One more time, I got upon the Lord. As we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Thank you, God. We bless you today. Lord, we wait upon you. We wait upon your presence. Lord, corporately, but also individually, Lord, we just choose to be those that wait on our God. 
Thank you for this time today. Thank you for the refreshing that you've released in, into people's lives. Thank you for the words of encouragement that have come. I want to invite the prayer teams to come up and just be available up here to pray for people. If, if you prayed a prayer this morning uh, to get and, and gave your life to the Lord, I just want to encourage you to take a minute uh, here with Ernie and let him pray for you. Ernie said that I could pray this prayer, and I'm reaching out to those who, who have hurt for the people that he just came from, who have desired freedom for them. Holy Spirit just hit me hard. What was the country? The country's names: Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania. Reach for those who have it there. Reach with me. Reach with me in your faith. In Jesus' name, yeah. Father, we declare that this shall not happen. Russia yeah. will not come into these countries. Lord, I'm even praying that it would be a natural thing that would act. You would bring natural uh, uh, separation, Lord God, that you would maintain the freedom, Lord God, that these people are declaring for, Lord. Your people are asking to be free, Lord God, of domination. I hear that word domination. There's no domination in Jesus' name. We declare it. No domination in Jesus' name. Speak it loudly in your heart from your mind that knowing in Christ we can have all things. Any two agree on any one thing. So in Jesus' name, we free you. We declare freedom for these countries in Jesus' name. No more domination. No more. Freedom. Thank you, Lord. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. Yes, Lord. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. Freedom, Lord. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Freedom. Freedom. That's free, is free indeed. Yes, God. Lord, we agree. Release your freedom. It's free indeed. Thank you, God. <laughs> we ask for salvation for Russia also. Holy Spirit, come over Russia, Lord God. Arise and shine. Draw your kids, Lord. They belong to you, too. Go get them, Lord. Go get them. Salvation. Keep going. Don't hop on these congas, I'm going to. Thank you, Jesus. He who the sun sets free is free in The sun sets free, is free indeed. He came for freedom to set the captives free. The he who 
the sun sets free, it's free indeed. He who the sun sets free, is free indeed. He came to set us free. Proclaim freedom in Jesus Christ our Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our strong. good service when nobody wants to go. That's right. You know you've had a good service when everybody just wants to keep praising God. You know, sometimes I think more happens in the spirit. More happens as far as taking ground, as far as pushing back darkness, when we, when we begin to mingle our prayers with praise and worship. Yes, but when we Lord. take those cries into praise and worship, Taking just a powerful them. thing has been happening this morning. I believe that God has been Taking doing things back. in people's lives, and some of you don't even know it yet. Some of you don't even know what has happened, but you're going to begin to step into it. So uh, the benediction I want to give us is out of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now to him who was able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that yeah. we ask or think according to the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and forever. God bless you saints. Have a wonderful day. I, I just, I have this feeling the, the, the worship band's just going to keep worshiping so feel free. Thank you.
strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait.